It's winter in Algonquin Park. The route's just covered in snow. In this video, I'll take you on a winter adventure with me, share some photography tips and tricks, and show off some beautiful Canadian winter scenery. The wind is just howling. Uh, but it's snowing, and I think I'll uh, slow down my shutter speed, see if I can capture some of that snow. Welcome, everybody, and welcome to Algonquin Park. I have checked myself into a yurt at Mew Lake for two nights and hoping to do two sunrises, two sunsets, and a day of calm photography. Well, I've come to my first location, which is Smoke Creek. As you can see, this is a roadside composition. I know a lot of landscape photographers will poo-poo a roadside composition as if you really need to hike 20 kilometers into the woods in order to get a beautiful photograph. I think a lot of times uh, roadside composition is what catches my eye and uh, sort of allows me to celebrate the nature. Typically the road is elevated above the, uh, above the subject, so you get this additional perspective that you may not have gotten if this was just out in the woods. All right, I'm just gonna trek down this hill So what I like about this location, what's always caught my eye driving by is these um, tree roots, maybe tree branches, you know, bits of tree that um, are sort of sitting high in this creek. I don't think maybe this creek is very deep. And so when a, a tree sort of dies here, uh, it just stays above the water. Even at 200 millimeters, I had to crop this photo in quite a lot. If you have a recommendation for a longer telephoto lens, let me know. Well, I carried on as I was excited to get deeper into the park and check out a location that I wanted to scout for a sunset later that day. All right, well, I just pulled off the road actually on Smoke Lake, just up from uh, from Smoke Creek, um, and I was hoping to scout this little uh, peninsula of rock here um, that's in front of me, and I just saw the most beautiful scene. So I decided to stop, so I wouldn't really destroy any of the um, snow with my uh, with my footprints, and uh, just run to the car and get my camera and tripod. Okay, well, what I really like about this is the um, the roots just covered in snow. Um, but the lake really not frozen just yet, and the, uh, you know, sort of hill in the background becomes a vanishing point. Um, the subject, obviously, is this tree right here, and it's supported by the snow and the roots and, and this other tree. Um, but it's really just a peaceful scene, which is what I like about it. So I'm going to continue to kind of work this composition. I think there's some noise over on this, uh, this right side here. So I may get a little lower and... Uh, you know, and sort of try to block out a couple of these elements. But um, yeah, this is uh, just so quiet. I love it. As I drove east, I got closer and closer to the campground. It was a little early to check into my yurt, but I decided I would take a look and see if it was unlocked. I had never stayed in a provincial park yurt before, and I found that it was super cozy and warm, very inviting and comfortable. After taking a quick peek, I decided to carry on further down the road, see what else I could find. Well, I think I'm just gonna head into the Algonquin Park Visitor Center for a little bit. Let me have a little bit of a warm up, stretch my legs after a long car ride. Anyways, let's, uh, let's see what they got in the winter. Well, it's basically the same thing as they have in the summer. The visitor center has some super creepy paper mache mannequins and some animal scenes that will definitely scare the shit out of your family. Oh wow, I hope I don't come across that. I think many Canadians, definitely Ontarians, have heard the name uh, Tom Thompson, who was a famous painter of the group of seven famously died in Algonquin Park uh, and was never sort of recovered. So we've got a nice mural to him and all of his uh, beautiful paintings. Hope that I can take something just as beautiful here. Nice fire tower here. 
really great lookout. Not really much to see today, but uh, very nice. Okay, getting back to photography. I'm making a point to stop at really any location that I think is beautiful and, uh, and sort of take advantage of the time that I have up here in Algonquin. So as I was leaving the visitor center, I just looked over my shoulder and, and this, uh, this river caught my eye. I don't know what it's going to be. Like I said, there's no special light or anything, but um, just got this beautiful S-curve that I think I can take advantage of. Looks like I've got to change lenses. Need a little bit more length than the 70 millimeters that this lens has. 70 to 200, that's what I need here. I'm zoomed in to uh, about 100 mil. Um, and I've just got this somewhat frozen river, really dark line leading through the, uh, leading through the snow coming in from the left here and just leading up to basically a bunch of trees. Um, but it's snowing and I think I'll uh, slow down my shutter speed, see if I can capture some of that snow um, and just really capture this winter scenery, this, uh, this moment in the, in the snow. The best way for me to improve these videos is with your feedback. If you are enjoying this video, not enjoying this video, or just have something to share, leave a comment below. Okay, well I've just seen this amazing composition. There's this big island and it's got a few rocks on one side out at Lake of Two Rivers. And right now the lake is a little bit frozen and so there's a sort of ice covered in snow area um, that's like a perfect vantage point, nice leading line up to this island. And I knew that uh, that's not going to be there tomorrow morning. So I'm not really sure what kind of composition caught my eye in this. I really love these three little islands. And I also really love this one tree that's sort of dominant on the right hand side here. And I love the depth but I've also really fallen in love with this ice that's down here. It's got this very interesting pattern, like it's been windswept or something. It looks very beautiful. Well, the light wasn't great, but it was time to head out to the spruce bog for my sunset shot. Okay, well, I'm just walking up and down this uh, stretch of road here to make sure there's no other compositions that maybe I'm missing. So far, it's just the sky that's got light. Um, nothing else is lighting up in the scene, but the sky is really beautiful. And I'm thinking that I might be able to accentuate that a little bit. So I've zoomed out. Unfortunately, I now have this power line or telephone line in my composition, but I'll be able to clone that out in Photoshop a little bit. I can't really get high enough up to see the whole thing, but I can see little bits of that river. So I'm just going to take some photos until the, uh, the light gets really good, and then probably that's it for me for the night. It was a fantastic day. The weather was so-so, but I got a lot of shots that I'm really happy with. I think I'm going to be going out for a sunrise probably tomorrow, so I'm going to be checking the weather all through the evening. Other than that, see you tomorrow morning. The wind is just howling, and uh, I think that kind of screws up the plans that I had for sunrise, which include, you know, a little bit of fog over the water, which, uh, of course, is not going to happen in these conditions. It's not particularly cold, it's only minus two degrees Celsius, but it's windy and the wind gusts are very fast and I've got this just cold, cold wind blowing across the lake. What caught my eye earlier was this uh, long crack in the ice here that um, doesn't have any snow on top of it and then right at the end of this leading line of this crack um, is this rather beautiful cottage on an island. So I framed up what I think is a nice composition um, but I want to change it and I want to show you how exactly I want to do that. As you can see over here I've got this crack um, that's got no snow on top of it. I guess the wind has you know blown over it and really 
um, cleaned off the top of this crack. So it leads this beautiful leading line. And I really like, I don't know if you can see it on this camera, but I really like that you can see some of the snow being blown across um, the crack. And I want to see if I can capture that. I love the location of this cottage on this little island. Um, but what I don't like about this composition is that there's just so much of this crack um, kind of in the boring midground here. Um, and the way that you get rid of that is that you lower your camera down just a little bit. By changing the angle, you're going to maximize some of the foreground. In theory, you'll keep your background basically the same, but the midground will thin out a little bit. I've lowered my tripod by maybe uh, a foot, just, just you know, taking in the last uh, leg of my tripod. That's allowed me to zoom in a little bit more to a 70 mil, the max on this lens. Um, and I've come, you know, down a little bit, so I've recomposed, and you can see that the midground just is a little more balanced. Um, there's just a little less of it in this frame, and so, you know, you really get this nice sense of sort of winter is here, um, but you still get this subject in the background, and, uh, and you get this nice crack kind of flowing through. Stay tuned for part two of my Algonquin Park adventure, where I record a full day time lapse, get caught in a wet snowstorm, and capture an epic winter sunrise. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.